morning, folks, and welcome back to Building the Bruce. Uh, I'm Mark, and just want to do a quick video this morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, uh, February the 26th. Um, I had shot some of this video last week, and then I went back and looked through it, and I thought I could probably do it a little bit better and get it a bit more concise. And then we had a big ice storm on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and they were calling for apocalyptic amount of freezing rain and ice accretion. And uh, what, what I also do in the wintertime is I plow snow um, in a big highway class plow truck. So that took up a lot of my time for those couple of days. And I fell behind a little bit on my welding. So it's uh, been burning the candle at both ends definitely for the last few days. but. Um, but I did want to put this video together. I think it's going to be useful for you and it's a, kind of a, a trick or a hack that I've, I've come up with for uh, saving money on chainsaw bar oil, which um, I, didn't, I didn't realize how expensive it had gotten. It's been a long time since I've purchased bar oil from, from a store and uh, my daughter and I were down at uh, PB Mart. Uh, that's, maybe that's just in Ontario, I'm not sure. But it used to be TSC, which I think we're, we're all over. Um, we were there a week or so ago, and I saw bar oil on sale for a gallon, around four liters, uh, for $14.99 on sale. And I, I couldn't believe the price. So I gave it some thought later on, and uh, I, I, I thought, geez, you know what, I got a better way uh, that I do it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this with you guys. And, and actually, uh, connected to that is I sold a bar and a couple chains last week to a guy and, and he was a forester and and he came and picked it up now the bar uh, I mean it was not new by any means had a lot of wear uh, but not tear on it like the paint was wore off in the usual spots and, and he looked it over and he was actually surprised how good the rails looked on it and how little metal wear there was considering how bad the paint looked so uh, I told him about how I mix my bar oil, and, and, he, and he was impressed by that. So someone who does that every day, you know, eight, eight hours a day, and, and you could see the results. So I think I'm on to something. So anyway, let me, let me get into it with you, and I'll explain how I do it. Okay, so firstly, I'll talk about what you can buy commercially, um, whether it's at your you know, Canadian Tire or your TSC or home hardware. Um, I think it's all basically the same stuff. This, this product over here, this Motion Lotion, I bought that probably 10 years ago. I, I buy it by the case uh, from Bailey's Wood Cutting Supply down in California, I believe. And then this is uh, Poulain Pro um, Bar and Chain Oil. So after I was running out of the Motion Lotion, I was buying basically anything that I could get my hands on that was, was inexpensive. But when I, when I read both of these products, um, you know, high viscosity, anti-sling oil, 100% um, virgin oil. Uh, so this is the same, 100% virgin oil, anti-sling additives. I, I think it's all the same, basically. Um, it's, a, it's a lubricant with a product that's been added that keeps it from slinging off of the bar. And um, whether it is winter weight or summer weight, uh, that gets back to the, the weight of the oil, and then it has something that's added to, to keep it from slinging off, off the bar. So I, I, I think it's all the same. But what I can't believe is that, you know, this or, or this, uh, you know, a gallon or, or you know, 3.87 liters is, is almost $15 on sale. Uh, you know, now when it says it's a virgin uh, oil, like for that kind of price, like is this collected by virgins from unicorns uh, on a full moon? Like I just, I just cannot get over how expensive this is. And, and to me, it's just, it's not, it's not worth it um, to pay for, for bar oil that much money. To, when it comes down to it, what, what I need is, uh, you know, it it's, needs to be a lubricant that's clean because I don't want to be dumping anything that has deposits or sediment into my chainsaw. I mean, we all know how expensive chainsaws are. So, so it needs to be a lubricant, it needs to be clean. It needs to have something that keeps it from slinging off the end of the, the bar as the chain goes 
goes past it and it needs to be affordable so 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 these two products you know uh get get some of those criteria but but definitely not affordable so let me show you what i've come up with so my bar oil starts off with uh, the base of it is used tractor transmission fluid now i have a kubota tractor and it takes uh, transmission fluid that's called udt and it doesn't matter whether it's a hydrostatic transmission or a glide shift or a gear transmission, they all take UDT. And it is an expensive transmission fluid. It's about $100 for five gallons of it. And uh, my tractor takes, I don't know if it's, it's, it's over 10 gallons, it may be closer to 15 gallons. And, and every time I do that, I generate a lot of used fluid that for all intents and purposes, is as clean coming out of the tractor as it is uh, when I put it in. Um, there's no deposits, the color is almost identical, it doesn't have any smell to it. Um, in, in fact, Martin, the fellow that I cut firewood with, uh, he has a Kubota also, and when he changes his hydraulic uh, fluid in the tractor, then he turns around and puts that into his case backhoe <laughs> when he changes the fluid on that. Because it is... It is a, it's a fluid, I think, that's uh, engineered for really high temperatures for the HST transmissions. And in any other application, like mine being a glide shift, it just it doesn't see those high temperatures. So it never really deteriorates. So every 800 hours, I have to spend two or $300 on fluid um, to pr you know, protect the transmission in that tractor. But what I end up with is a lot of fluid that it's got to be good for something else. So that's where I came up with this idea. So, so this, this clean but used transmission fluid meets my criteria right off the bat. I, I will not put used engine oil in my chainsaw. Um, it's just, it's got too many deposits. It's got carbon in it. And like I said, chainsaws are just too expensive to pour that dirty black engine oil into, into the chainsaw. This is a totally different story. Um, this is used, if you can believe it, transmission fluid. So I am gonna fill up my mixing cup. Right about there with that stuff. Okay, so is this a lubricant? Yes, clearly it is. Is it meant for metal to metal, metal, to metal contact? Absolutely. So when you're running a chain over your bar, same scenario, metal to metal contact. So this is great and it's free basically. And there's a lot of it right now. I, I imagine between Martin and I, two guys with tractors, we've probably got 30 gallons of it sitting around waiting to be used for something else. So that's a good start for the bar oil. Now this is what takes it to the next level. So this is Tacifier, and it comes from Lubrico, which is, um, I think this is the name of the product actually, but it, you can hardly see it because I've had this for like 10 years. It's from Commercial Oil, and I'm sure there's lots of other companies that sell this, this Tacifier. Now what I believe this is actually for is for guys who do oil spraying of vehicles. When it starts off with like a base oil, and then they add a tack of fire to make it stick so it doesn't just run away. So I believe that's what this tack of fire is for. Now this, this wasn't cheap. This, this four liter gallon, say, was about $80. And that was about 10 years ago. But um, I cut a lot of wood. I mean, I cut, you know, 25, 30 face cord a year, every year. And this is all I've used so far in that time. It takes so little tackifier mixed in with your base oil, really, to produce bar oil. And, and this is thick stuff. Um, it, it has to be kept warm and it needs some time to be able to pour it out. It is, if you can see, I got a little bit on my fingers here, how stringy that is. That's what you want to see in your bar oil. That's what keeps the lubricant from slinging off the end of the bar when it goes around the tip. So this 
is crazy sticky. So these two products together, you know, this one was free. This one was, you know, kind of expensive, but it goes such a long way. Um, there's, you know, if that was 10 years, I've got another 10 years <laughs> at least worth of uh, bar oil that I could make up out of this. Um, now, now it works for me because I can get the hydraulic fluid for, for nothing. But, uh, you know, if you know a farmer, if you know someone who's got a tractor, um, there's, you know, lots of opportunities out there through friends and neighbors to be able to pick up the transmission fluid, um, you know, for nothing as well. If, if Martin and I weren't cutting so much wood or if he wasn't using it in his backhoe, it would just be like a waste product for us that we'd have to take somewhere to dispose of because there's just so much of it. So um, it, it, really, it really works out well. Okay, folks, so what I do is I start out with my base oil. So this is my used transmission fluid. And, and I don't measure this out. This is all just approximate. And then I add the tackifier. And I don't know if it's one or two ounces that I add in that amount. I just kind of glug it in. Um, I, I, I can tell you that if I'm mixing oil for chainsaw milling, when I'm gonna be running an extra long bar, then I will add more tackifier uh, just to help it from slinging off the end for those long, long cuts when, when you're milling. And, and also when, when I'm milling, and, and to use it up too, I will add the consumer bar and chain oil to this um, just to have that extra little bit of, of tack in the oil when, when I'm milling. But otherwise, uh, when I'm just creating bar oil just for cutting and bucking up logs, it's the hydraulic fluid and then a couple ounces of the tackifier. Now this is a slow pour. And, and technically if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to get, look at that. <laughs> if you wanted to get uh, more creative with it, you could measure this out to a, to a couple ounces. And that's it. That, that is plenty right there. Just, it takes forever. I'm not actually pouring it out anymore. It's just, it's so stringy. It's taking forever to get in there. Gosh, I'll actually... Let's try to get that off. Okay, so given the amount that I put in there, which is probably a little bit more than usual, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of the hydraulic transmission fluid here. I'm gonna bring that up to here. Okay, so now what? Well, here's a funny story. The first time I went and I picked up the tackifier, I talked to the guy there and I said, how do you mix it? And they said, well, we blend it. Okay. Well, to me, a blend, blending it means you use a blender. So I came home and, uh, and, and my wife and daughter, they were out of the house and I snuck into the kitchen and I grabbed the blender, <laughs> the kitchen blender. And I brought it out to the shop here and I took, I took my uh, concoction here and I poured it in the blender and, and I turned it on. Well, you can guess what happened. Well, I, I blended it up, it blended it. Well, but I also ruined the blender. So, so that was the end of that. Um, what, what I did find out, and, and this took me a little bit of research to do, is after I had blended it, 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 it didn't look the same as bar oil. It looked, um, it was kind of milky and foamy. And it, it, um, the, tack, the tackifier was in there, but it, it didn't seem to do its job. What I came up with, the solution for that is after looking into it a little bit, bl blending in that way, it, it has to do with long, this is chemistry, long form or long chemical chains. When you blend it, you're chopping those up. You're chopping up those, those bonds so that you're really not getting uh, the tack of fire effect. What you need to do is blend it at a, at a slower speed so you're not chopping up the tack of fire. You're just mixing it in with your base oil. So, so my second uh, try at it was just using this small paint mixer on a handheld drill. And that, that really works a lot better. It doesn't chop everything up, it just blends the two types of oils together. So I'll show you how I do that now. So I start out on low, just so that I'm not sending this flying all over the shop. Very simple. 
And you can feel, I can feel the, the tack of fire down in there. It's, it's very thick still. So I would say this process here, you might end up blending for, for a minute or two. Okay, folks, so I've been blending that. I, I'm thinking it's less than two minutes. And you can see as it's coming off the paint mixer, it's dripping off, but it's there's, it, there's stringiness there. It's hanging in there. And that's the tackifier doing its job. Um, now, if you want to mix a winter weight or a summer weight, um, that all comes back to how much tackifier you're going to put in there. I like to see that stringiness as it's dripping off so that I know that I'm all, I'm all blended up. And then when you look at this oil now, the cleanliness of it, the color of it, um, you know, the stickiness of it, you know, to me, for all intents and purposes, the way that that hangs in there between my fingers <laughs> is bar and chain oil. Okay, folks, so, so getting back to the criteria for my uh, bar and chain oil, um, I, I need clean fluid, I've got that. I need uh, something that's gonna keep it from slinging off the end of the bar. That's my tackifier, I've got that. And then I need something that is affordable. So that's, that's, uh, that's what we're working on, affordability now. Um, so I did some simple, quick math, I hope it's right. I'm gonna try to switch back between uh, between metric and imperial. Um, so I'll start out with, uh, with four liters. So four liters is 4,000 milliliters. And that jug of tackifier that I bought was four liters and it was approximately $80. So that works out as at two cents per milliliter. And there's 29 milliliters in an ounce. So breaking that out is 58 cents per ounce or 58 cents per 29 milliliters. And then if I multiply that by this, I just use this container. This is a five liter container. So that's, that's more than a gallon. Um, so five liters. So to fill this five liter container at the price of the tackifier, basically because the hydraulic transmission fluid is free, it works out to $2.90. So to fill this, uh, like I say, five liter container with my bar and chain oil. So it would be, it would be two of these, basically, at, at one ounce per liter is going to cost me $2.90. So $2.90 to fill this, or... $14.99 on sale for this. I think, I think I've got it figured out. Okay, folks, so to summarize, if I take my used tractor hydraulic transmission fluid and I add tackifier, and what I've created is clean, sticky, bar oil at a fraction of the price, uh, $2.90 to fill up this five liter container. And uh, like I said, part of this equation is based on the fact that I get the transmission hydraulic fluid for free. But I think if you ask around or if you know the right people, you can also get that for free. And uh, once you have the tackifier, you basically have a unlimited supply of affordable bar and chain oil. So I will mix up another container of that and do the same thing and fill this, fill this up. And I'll be good to go for another month or so. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. 
I'm happy that, uh, you know, I'm saving money. I'm using a, basically a waste product, giving it a second life and, uh, you know, saving, saving some money along the way. Cause let's face it, you know, one of those reasons, um, with burning firewood and heating your house with wood and using a renewable resource like that, this, this kind of meets all those criteria as well. And at the end of the day, it's nice to keep the money in your pocket. Um, 14, $15 a gallon for bar and chain oil seems, seems ridiculous to me. Uh, when you can basically do it yourself in, in a matter of minutes, um, for, for a quarter, like just a very small amount of, of money invested. And, uh, this, I say this, this tackifier, it doesn't go bad. It's going to last until I'm probably done cutting wood. You know, if, if this is going to last another 10 years, then, um, you know, that, that's a long time. So I'm, I'm happy that I found this product. I'm sure it's available, uh, in, in a lot of different areas. Um, but, but again, this is just, this is just something that I do and, uh, I feel good about saving some money and using up a waste product. And at the end of the day, it's, it's doing the, it's doing the same job. It's, uh, keeping the bar and chain lubricated. It's keeping the metal to metal contact to a, to a minimum. And because of the tackifier, it's keeping the oil, uh, where it, where it should be. So yeah, it, it ticks off all the boxes for my criteria. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's something that, that'll help you out. It's something that you can use and, and save you a little bit of money. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for today. Okay, folks. Well, that's about it for today. Hopefully I, I've shown you something that'll be useful for you in your wood cutting journey and keep a few more dollars in your pocket. I've got some welding to finish up in the shop here. And then I'm hoping to get on the tractor and get down to the wood pile. I've got about four bins full of, of split wood that I need to move down and, and stack. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful day out there, so I want to take advantage of that. We do have another ice storm coming tomorrow, so probably some more time in the plow truck. And uh, fitting, it all, fitting it all in these days, it's a little bit busy. But uh, spring's on its way, and it won't be long till we're heading up to the property. Uh, I still got to do a video of, of testing the wood stove that I built inside the, uh, the ice fishing tent uh, to make a hot tent basically. So we still got to do a video of that. The, the weather came in and, 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 and changed those plans, but um, it's coming for sure. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if, if you, you know, give us a thumbs up, we'd appreciate that. And uh, definitely subscribe. Uh, we've had a few fellows that have left comments uh, asking about wood stoves and, and they've had some issues running their stove that I, I think I've been able to help them out with. But I uh, always appreciate reading the comments and, and certainly just you taking the time to, to watch our videos and follow our, our progress. So anyway, have a great Sunday and uh, have a great day. See you next time.